his croup. And you can see that it's fairly flat, quite long, and there's this little tiny jumping bump. We're going to see this a lot. And horses with this particular conformation, a long, flat croup with a little jumping bump, tend to be very scopy. Uh, the other big factor with this horse was that Ian Miller trained him beautifully. And uh, if you look here, basically the square of the croup, the higher what we call hip bones, you can see them here. And I think that the higher they are and the wider they are, and basically the further forward they are, the better. Now, <laughs> this is the opposite. This is touch of class. And this indicates individual gold medal, which she won. Actually, she won team gold medal and individual gold medal in the games. Uh, very, very refined, typey thoroughbred horse. Uh, and the question is, how can she jump a jump like this? This is the biggest jump in the Olympics. Uh, one of the ways she could jump it is <coughs> that Joe Forges could ride so well. Uh, this was not the kind of mare that you could just hunt down like a loose horse and, and, and uh, jump this. She had to be packaged. Uh, the impulsion balance had to be just right. And if you look at her, these muscles here through the stifle, and then if you look at the same muscles here from the back, I think these are the most important jumping muscles. These are called the biceps femoris and part of the hamstring group. And you can see they're very well defined on her, much more than the average thoroughbred. She's a little bit cow hocked in that her legs don't come straight down. They come in and then out a little bit. And that's only important in books. This was another giant horse. This was San Lucas. This was Frank Chapeau's mount. Wonderful cup horse, wonderful puissance horse. And he was almost 18 hands. He was 17-3. One of the things that he has is you can see the point of his buttock sticks out here, not as much as some horses. But I think that that's a very good thing. And you can see how high these hip bones are. <clears throat> if you look at the approach, and we're going to talk about this a fair amount late, later. But let's see if we can blow this up a little bit. You see how four beat that horse is? But it's four beat. The opposite, usually when we talk about a four-beat horse, we're talking about a lazy horse whose landing has both front legs down uh, before his hind legs are up. This is the opposite. This is a horse who's super collected, super engaged. His front legs are both off the ground and his hind legs. So what's happened is that this diagonal the right hind, left front diagonal has been broken up from the tremendous collection. And if you're going to jump big jumps, that's what you're going to have to do. Now we we'll just talk about body types a little bit. Probably not the ideal jumper. Lots of ponies are good jumpers, but maybe not. On the other hand, this is what you want. High power to weight ratio with good angles. 
And so we look at this horse. Now this, almost all these horses I'm going to show you, and I'll tell you the few exceptions, are Olympic Games quality horses, jump two meters, uh, very highest class horses that you can see. And one of the advantages of this is that you can see the very best horses for many, many years. This was a horse who wasn't that quality. He was a Grand Prix horse. His name was Fat City. Uh, and this is probably as fat a horse as you can get and as bulky a horse. The other problem with horses like this is they don't tend to last long. Now, the opposite would be a horse like this, a thoroughbred horse, very, very high <laughs> ratio of horsepower to weight ratio. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to tell you is that thoroughbred horses could jump. I know nobody believes that now, but you'll see. This was a horse that George had. As a green horse, he went and was second in the World Cup with Katie riding him. He then got a very bad disease called purpura hemorrhagica, lost the skin on both hind legs pretty much up to his stifles. These markings here, let's see, uh, this was from skin grafts that we took off his side here to graft his legs. And I'm not sure what I can tell you about him that I like so much, uh, except that I vetted him for George. And he said, and I told him some little things, and he said, what do you think? And I said, well, if you don't buy him, I will. <laughs> and this was a, again, if you look at his hip bones, very high. Uh, he won his first Grand Prix coming back after a year's rehabilitation, but the truth was he was never that class of horse again, unfortunately. And there's some professionals in the room who know these horses well, and I would love to hear comments. This is basically a square horse. If you outline from the point of the buttock back here, the highest point. In this case, it's the withers. You can see the withers are appreciably higher than the croup on this horse. And this is basically square. And most of these horses will fit into this. This was Calypso, uh, one of the great horses of all time. And again, uh, uh, Olympic gold medal team winner, uh, World Cup winner. And if, um, if I forget, I, I just put these down from memory. So I think I've left out some, some horses that should have medals. Anyway, this was a beautifully balanced horse. Uh, I have pictures of other lucky boys here. And he was by a thoroughbred sire, lucky boy who was very influential uh, Dutch sire. And he was beautifully balanced. Uh, he never fell. And he could turn like a cutting horse. Uh, Melanie rode him with a, a, from a pretty good gallop. And he could handle as much speed as she asked him to. Great length here from the point of his hip. We'll get down to exactly what that is, all the way back to the point of his buttock. I think length from here to here is very important. <clears throat> OK, here's a head-on picture of him. He had a pony face. He had a pony mind. and. We're not talking about horses' minds, but we all know how important that is. There's plenty of horses that can jump in jumps that have bad minds and are not useful horses. 
you're going to see a lot of this jump. This was the most dangerous jump I've ever seen in a horse show. Some of the very best horses in the world fell in it. It was away from the end gate, and it was filled with brush, and horses would try to bank it. And this was at Hickstead. And what finally happened is George had a fall and broke his neck, and then Dougie Bunn cut the hedge down the next day. <laughs> OK, here's a horse who's basically over square. He's higher than he is long. And this is Rodrigo's horse, Balabe. This is another great horse. Um, we're going to keep going quickly, but one thing I'd like you to look at here is these muscles. Very well-defined, big muscles here. And we'll see his sire, Galabe, who had the same muscling. We're talking about basic shapes. This is a rectangular horse. He's actually longer than he is high. Uh, this was the first of the sort of modern German horses, even though he looks like a tank. He was much more refined than the other horses. This was Roman, uh, won the world championships. Uh, and if we want to see what a real rectangular horse looks like, these are saddle horses. And you can see that's a whole different look than the horses we're looking at. OK, now, this was a mare. Uh, Ludger Bierbaum saw her as a young mare, or Philly liked her thought that uh, she reminded him of Touch of Class. So he named her Classic Touch. And he won the gold medal, individual gold medal. This is a German mare. She was very hot. Uh, you can see she's very uphill and that she's much higher in a wither. People talk about horses having good muscling in the gasket. And if you look at her, she sure doesn't look like she has that. But if you look at her from behind, you can see that she has a much more prominent muscle than you'd guess. Again, these muscles here, these biceps muscles, very well defined. Uh, <clears throat> Just to tell you briefly what happened to her, Ludger was riding her. She was, as I say, a very hot mare. First class of the uh, individual, Hackamore broke. It had rotted through, and nobody knew it. And the noseband broke. And as soon as it broke, he jumped off. <laughs> he wasn't going to try to fool with it. <laughs> and in, the, in, in that particular Olympics, you had a throwaway score. So he threw that one away. And he ended up winning the individual medal with the others. OK. Now, here's another horse. I think this is the best horse in the world right now myself. And you can see very different. This horse is very high behind, much higher than the withers. This is Shutterfly. This was not an easy horse to make. Uh, first time I saw this horse, Meredith, sorry about that. Meredith was riding the horse, sitting way back with very long reins. And everybody was saying, oh, her reins are too long. Now, here's one of the great riders of the world, and there are people in the stands are criticizing her. Well, this mare. Uh, no, this is a horse, actually. I don't think I'm here. This, this, this horse uh, had a bad front end and was very hot. And so sitting back with those long reins enabled her to keep her body back and still keep the front end off the jumps. I mean, this to me is such a typical picture 
this horse is so powerful that she can just sit on the horse in the middle of the oxer and not worry at all about anything. <laughs> Um, and here, she fell off. She was going to look like she was going to win the World Cup, this last World Cup. And here's what happened. Look, here's the landing. She's in a perfect position. He couldn't get any better. And he locks up with his hind legs. That's not a typical picture. You don't see horses land with their hind legs straight like this. Locks up, stumbles in front, almost goes down. Look where his knees are. And he turns left and she keeps going right. Um, if we want to see a horse that's really high behind, this was a great race horse, Seattle Slough. This was as a three year old. And uh, that's wonderful. Some very fast horses are very high behind like that. But it would be hard to package them as jumpers. OK, now, I don't know if you've been noticing, but a number of these horses stand with their legs back like this. You read the books and they'll tell you this is a terrible thing makes the horses choppy to ride and unsound and unsafe because they can fall down. Well, you will see that a large number of wonderful horses stand like this. This is Sapphire. And I don't know if McLean's here, we talked about this, but beautiful approach, perfect, perfect takeoff. And then look, that rail is down. And that's a very disappointing thing. <laughs> uh, horses have to try and miss the fences. Now, I think that when horses stand like this, with their legs in front of them, it's frequently an indication that something's bothering them. Now, the saddle horses are trained to do that. This was Ann Krasinski's mount in the 92 games, cannonball, and he was suffering from a fetlock problem at the moment, and that's why he's standing like that. So the next thing that we're going to talk about <laughs> uh, here are what things that I look at. This is the shoulder blade or scapula. I think that the more upright it is, and this is not at all upright, the better the front end. I think the longer it is, which means that the shoulder joint here is lower, I think that that is a better front end. And what I'm talking about is not how well the horses can pull their knees. I'm talking about how hard they can push off the ground, how hard they can really slam off the ground. This muscle here, in the back of the shoulder, this is the triceps muscle. This is the same as the muscle in the back of your arm. And this is the most powerful muscle to extend the elbow. And that's what pushes the horse up in front with the front legs. So I want to see a great big triceps. Here is the point of the hip. It's also called the tuber coxy. Uh, tuber just means a protuberance. So that means the protuberance of the hip, of the uh, uh, pelvis here. Uh, this is the jumping bump, or tuber sacrale, which is the protuberance over the sacrum. This is the tuber ischii, which is the protuberance from the ischium, which is actually the seat bone. If horses rode, this is what they'd be sitting on. <laughs> and these are the muscles. They start way up here and come down here. And you can really see them in back of the stifle. And these are the, called the biceps femoris. They're part of the hamstring group. And I think that these are the most important jumping muscles. So 
Now, here's a bad horse. This horse had a bad mind. Huge ability, maybe as good as any horse I've ever seen. He jumped, I don't know, seven, eight, very comfortably. And I saw him at home when he was relaxed and he was fantastic and he got to the horse shows and he was very disappointing. So what, what can we see about him? Huge big wither. Almost all good thoroughbred horses have a very prominent wither. If they fall and break their wither, it doesn't interfere with the jumping, even though it heals much flatter. This is a long-necked horse. That comes out a little bit low. You'd like to see it come out a little bit higher. Shoulder joints quite low, and you can actually see this is his scapula. It's, if you take a, a point, we'll do this a little bit more tomorrow, and you see that it will end up going right to the front of his wither, rather than where people talk about having a, a laid back or a sloping shoulder. They usually take a line from the point of the shoulder here, which is where the joint is, back to the back of the wither. And you can see that's a very different angle. We'll look at that some other horses. Big triceps muscle. Very, very wide from here to here. These are the biceps muscles. And same thing here. High hip bones. Uh, and as I say, unfortunately, a terrible brain. So we'll talk a little bit about necks. <laughs> That's a whole story in itself. But anyway, this is a horse named Jopalook, the best horse that France has ever produced. Again, an individual gold medal winner. And you can look at the way the neck comes out. This is ideal. The length of the neck is not terribly important, but the way it comes out of the shoulder and having a high neck like this. Now, what you almost never see is this sort of a peacock neck straight up like that, which you see in saddle horses. Also, if you take a look at his feet, big boxy feet. Uh, if you took this horse, brought him into the United States, there's a possibility that an American blacksmith would chop him down, cut his heels down, and that's not a good idea. Now we'll look at a horse. Um, this horse was very sick at that time, which is why it looks like this. Um, very skinny horse. And even though he's high-headed, you can see, I think, that his neck comes out here very differently. It comes low out of his shoulder as opposed to Jopaloop and comes high. Now, let's take a look at this horse. This was <coughs> the Olympic Games in uh, 1972, probably before most of you guys were born. Uh, and these were big jumps. This was uh, oxer, oxer vertical. Uh, and in the Nations Cup, which, okay, he probably had, you know, 100, 150 rounds, something like that, there were only three clears in the whole thing. He had one of them. Now, this is not an ideal hot confirmation. But horses who are made like this are made like the gazelles and some of them can really jump. Remember we talked about very long, 
flat croup with a little jumping bump here. This horse had as much scope as almost any horse you'd ever want to see. Because his neck came out of his shoulder so low, he didn't have a good front end. He was very slow in front. He would not be a wonderful horse show horse today. Uh, he couldn't run at the jumps, but he could jump anything you could build. This is my favorite horse forever and ever. Uh, this is a 17 hand thoroughbred horse named Riviera Wonder. I looked him up. I'll tell you how stupid we were in olden times. He, the biggest horse show used to be Madison Square Garden. He was the only horse who was ever champion there four times. The first time was as a three year old. <laughs> and we were surprised when he was so unsound. <laughs> uh, he had the longest shoulder blade of any horse I've ever seen. You can't really see it well here. And see how he really sticks out here? And again, his, this is you know obviously an old black and white picture, and it's hard to see anything. But from here to here, tremendous length. Uh, he was like Jem Twist with big scope and could jump probably six inches higher than Jem. <laughs> now, oh, the, the other thing I want to point out is very short neck horse, huh? Yeah. Um, so I think not, not a big deal. Here was the rider who rode him in three of his championships. Uh, the funny thing is that there were a lot of other people who rode, not that extreme, but similarly then. And the idea was you take the weight off the horse in the air. Well, it's, the physics doesn't work, but it sounds like a good idea. There he is. Uh, that's a rider that if you don't know who he is, you should find out and read his books. But this is Bill Steinkraus, who was the greatest rider of his era in this country. And a wonderful stylist. Now this is a horse who was not a legitimate Olympic Games horse, but he was a Pan Am horse. And look how short his neck is. Now, you know, you probably wouldn't buy a horse made like this, but the fact is that in spite of this tiny little short neck, he jumped well enough to be a contender in the uh, Pan Ams. And now we'll talk about long-necked horses. This was a horse that Leslie had named Boing. Not Boeing, but Boing, because he could Boing right off the ground. <laughs> Look at the huge triceps muscle here. He had a bad back, and when his back was good, this was how he jumped. And when his back was bad, he had rails down behind him. Again, we can see wider through here. He's base narrow behind, and you read the books and they'll tell you that that's not a good confirmation. Well, there are a lot of wonderful horses who are made like that. If you look at him here, and this is not untypical, you can see how much force there is on this leg and this knee is getting bent back, which is uh, very similar to what you see in race horses. The question is, why do these horses have so little knee problems? And I think it's a question of repetition. The race horse does this every single stride, and the jumpers do it, you know, 20 times in a class. 
And so jumpers don't have a lot of problems like this. Uh, here's a, a landing problem. I don't know if you can see his expression, but I know how he feels. <laughs> but he's not getting pitched over the horse's neck. And I guess his head's there. <laughs> OK. <laughs> now, here's a horse with a big U neck, very, very upside down neck. huh? This was a wonderful horse. He was an Argentine horse. Very difficult to ride. What can we see here? That he went with his neck upside down. And uh, Conrad, uh, he was originally Rodney's horse, and then Conrad rode him very successfully. He uh, ended up uh, winning the uh, second World Cup with him. And again, if you look, that long, flat croup, little jumping bump, very prominent, high tuberitiae or point of his buttock, big length from point of his hip to the point of his buttock. There she is. So again, fairly wide, fairly square, big muscles through here, which is basically what I want to see from behind. The uh, question is, what's more important, the muscular development or the skeletal structure? Well, we'll look at that a little bit later. But I think the ideal is when you have both. You can get away with less muscle with certain skeletal types, and we'll look at a horse like Chef to see that. But uh, I think that uh, it's, it's to be aware that very few horses can get away with less muscle. What we're going to look at now, though, is we're going to look at scapula here, which is the shoulder, which is the shoulder blade, and we're going to look at where it is how high or low it is. And we're going to look for this big muscle here, which is the triceps muscle. This was the last dates, maybe with the exception of Easy Sauce, but this was Super Horse. I want to say something about him. He, he uh, won all the stunt chips uh, as a young horse. He, uh, won uh, two silver medals in games. Uh, but this was a horse with basically limited scope. And Frank had had his sire, Frank Bredham, and Frank to be able to carry a lot of speed and have lots of momentum. And he trained Greg to ride him like that. And I think that with a, a more backward type, I think he would have been the best junior jumper in the world. But he needed that speed to compensate for the fact that he didn't have easy scope. Now, I had marked here the points on his shoulder blade. And you can see two things. One is the extent is very low. And look how upright it is. If you were to take this angle here to the back of his wither, you'd say he has a nice sloping shoulder. But when you look at him, the shoulder blade is almost upright. It's actually, oh, I think about 74 degrees, which is very high. And he had a great big triceps muscle here. You can see the point of his buttock is fairly low and does not stick out so much. Big jumping bump, more of a sloping croup. Big muscles through here, though, and good muscle development, looking at it the other way. So 
big muscles, but in terms of the big scope, which I'm saying is a very high prominent point of his buttock and a very long, flattish croup. That's not what he has. Um, this is interesting. This is um, John Whitaker riding Jim in the, where the top four riders change horses in the world championships. John got off with a bloody nose. He said, bit quick off the ground, isn't he? <laughs> uh, this is so typical. He jumped in the most beautiful form. Can you see where his hind legs are? Those are his hind legs. Here's his hock. Here's his feet. That's a horse that's good behind. <laughs> and uh, again, what I'm trying to point out is how upright this is. And sorry, this is a bad picture of this horse. But again, if we look at these muscles here, they're very Arnold Schwarzenegger like muscles. So now we go to the best horse that England ever produced. This was Milton. He's still probably the biggest money winning horse ever. This is a <clears throat> beautiful type, beautifully balanced horse. <laughs> He's uh, out of a thoroughbred mare by a Dutch horse. Um, big wither, big triceps muscle, huge depth from here to here, and good muscling from the back, but the combination means that these are very big muscles, very straight hind leg. Now, you can't see it, but he has a very sloping shoulder. And this is an indication, I think, of <clears throat> how well they care for him. This was a form of air conditioning. <laughs> when we first saw this horse, he had the worst drapiest front end in the world. It just hang, hung straight down. Huge, wonderful hind end. He never developed a great front end, but it was, John rode him so well and just gave him a little bit extra room at the jumps that you were never aware that the front end lacked anything. Uh, <clears throat> John rode him in a very, very collected frame kept the front end very light. This is an unusual picture for a horse of this quality uh, reaching at this jump. This was at Barcelona Olympics, and the jumps there were so big that everybody was reaching. OK, now here are two horses with very sloping shoulders. This is a race horse. And you can see here is the, it's outlined here. And this is a saddle horse. Now look at the slope there. Now with saddle horses, you want all the movement in front of them. Very few jumpers are wonderful movers because they have to push off the ground. Now, <clears throat> here is Jem and here is Milton. Exactly the same phase of takeoff. The hind legs are just touching down. Two things to look at with Jeff. First, where his front legs are. They're both off the ground, and they're coming up. And secondly, you look at the angle of his body. Here's Milton at the same place. One front leg hasn't even come off the ground yet and see how much flatter the angle is. So Jem was a horse you just 
virtually couldn't run him through a fence. His front end was so fast and so good that you could run him at any vertical, and he would just hit the ground and slam off the ground. Milton was the exact opposite, and he needed some room. And here you can see John giving him some room. But he was also a wonderfully scopy horse. Now we talked about big triceps muscles. This is Ann Krasinski's horse, Lydius. And this is what I'm looking for here. Here's a nice picture of Ann. Uh, there are some people that almost never take big, bad pictures. Joe Farges, you can take a thousand pictures and you won't find a bad one. Anne is another person. So what are we talking about, George, with this following hand? That very low, perfect following hand. We're going to look at how horses really jump. We don't have puissances anymore, but if you want to see how horses jump, let's look at how they jump the biggest fences they possibly can. To start off with, the approach has to be very energetic. And you can see very super collected. Both front feet are way off the ground while the hind feet are on the ground. <laughs> now, this is Calypso. This is an Enapuissance. But this was how Calypso normally galloped. And this is Calypso just starting to set up for a jump. See how the hind legs are digging in? And how light the front end is? And you can see Melanie's way back. He's just letting the front end be as light as it possibly can be. And this is the balance that if you can get horses in, is really wonderful. Here's Eddie. This is Eddie Mackin. And so what happens next is one front foot hits. Then the other front foot hits. Now look how this horse is really sunk down. Either that or this woman is seven feet tall. But, <laughs> See how short the horse is? And what the horse is going to do is pole vault. And as he moves forward, he's going to extend these front legs. And you can see he's loaded up. The fetlocks are right on the ground. This is the same picture, but look at how dramatic this horse's hind end is how much energy is going to be there when this horse hind end finally engages. Also, if you look, very few of these people are leaning forward. <laughs> and nice light feel. OK, now this horse is starting up. He's still shrunk down, but the legs are going to start to extend as he pole vaults over them. And look at his body. His body is horizontal. In the next instant, he goes to this. And that is before his hind feet have even touched down. So the whole change from the horizontal body to this trajectory is from the push of the front legs. Now the hind legs have just touched down, and they're going to compress. They're not going to push. They're going to compress. And again, the horse's front end is going up because of the push from the front legs. Here it's completely compressed. Now this horse's front end hasn't gotten up enough. <laughs> These were big jumps, by the way. 
Okay, now the hind legs are starting to straighten out, and this is what's pushing this horse up. Now, if you look, some of these horses are leading a little bit long, and there are horses that ideally need a little room, and other horses are going to be going up almost vertically. The other thing, if you look at this gray horse, he's jumping at an angle. Two advantages. One is, if you hit the blocks, you're likely to jam them. It's easier to keep them up. The other thing is, if you're jumping at an angle, you can just change the angle slightly to change the distance without changing the horse's balance. So, most people now would start to be getting jumped loose. This was, this is a very stupid guy, but was probably the greatest technical rider I ever saw. <laughs> Gerd Rootfang. Gerd was a student of Alvin Chacamillas, and Alvin said to us, he said, you know, I have a boy, as soon as he learns to go on, not to go off course, he's gonna be the best rider in the world, and he was. Um, you can see here, this horse is leaving from a much tighter spot, and he's pushing absolutely straight up, again, jumping at an angle. This was a little light thoroughbred horse. This was the horse in the beginning, uh, untouchable with Kathy Cousiner on it. And you can see beautiful bascule, so now it uses its back to pull its hind leg up. And here's Garrett in the air on top of this thing, just looking like he's jumping three foot six. And now comes this part. You don't want to be sitting on the horses when they're jumping like this. You want to give them every opportunity. Let reins are completely loose. Seat is nowhere near interfering with the horse. Again, this is Kathy Cousiner on a horse named Fleet Apple. Kathy rode this horse in this puissance as her only showing experience before the individual of the Olympic Games. <laughs> yeah, and a very difficult horse. First round was terrible, second round was great. Okay, now, here's what happens to most people, they get jumped loose. But, and this guy's not gonna have a great easy landing. <laughs> But here's Frank Chapeau on San Lucas, and you can see his seat is back, and he's fighting to get his legs down, and he's going to have a good landing. Okay, uh, so that's how horses mechanically jump. Um, just to show you, it's not always so easy. This horse was actually hung up. Both his front and hind legs were off the ground. <laughs> he had to take the fence to pieces to get him down. <laughs> now, this was an interesting horse. This was a light, beautiful, delicate, bad stopping thoroughbred horse that a lot of people in, in Europe had had, they knew he was a wonderful jumper. And then Kathy Kuzner got him and taught him not to stop. And here he is winning the Grand Prix of Auk. And he was 16-1. And you talk about somebody secure in the air over a big jump. If you look here, this is just a simple hackamore. This is just a nose band with the reins attached. And that's what she wrote him in. 
This is a, a pitch for Kathy Kuzner's passion, which is horses in the hood. And this is to give kids in the inner city of LA a horse experience, not to teach them to be great riders, but to teach them about horses and how horses can give them a perspective on their lives. And so there's a lot of people in this room, actually, who donate to this. Uh, but this is horsesinthehood.org. One of the things we can talk about is withers. <clears throat> Almost all good thoroughbred horses have <coughs> prominent withers. This was a Sal Francais by Al May. Uh, this was I Love You. Norman won the World Cup in ancient times, uh, 1983. Uh, <laughs> right, yeah. And again, you can see huge length. Okay, now, so then we'll look at a horse with big withers. And this was a horse with a bad front end. Um, but he ended up missing a lot of jumps. He was on a gold medal winning team, Olympics. Uh, one of the most generous horses I've ever known, a horse named Albany that Leslie had. Um, Here's a horse who fell and broke its withers. Okay. This was a horse named Flambeau, one of the great French horses. Uh, and one of the things that this horse doesn't have is great length through here. It has very good muscling. If you look here and here, and a fair amount of width here, but quite low here. What this horse needed was a lot of speed. And that's the way that uh, Frederick rode him. Uh, he had a very good front end, uh, huge big triceps muscle. And this was very typical of how he jumped. You can see his front legs are almost completely off the ground. His hind legs are nowhere near touching yet. This is a, another type of horse. This is sort of an English cob. Uh, this was a horse named Angle's Ark. This was Malcolm Pyra's best horse. Uh, he was not a long-backed horse, but he had a lot of flexibility in this area from his last rib to his pelvis. And he was flat jumping, and so he had to invert a lot. And this horse had a bad back. And it was interesting because when his back was bad, not only did he, wasn't he able to do that, but the front end stopped working. Now, here's a long back horse. This was a horse named Diestery, won the European Championships five times. A uh, couple of little things. He had a bad back. He had a very long back, and it bothered him. Again, very high hips, big muscles. One of the things they did with him for his back is they built up his hind feet so he had a very, very high angle. Okay, and you can see that became the fashion in Europe. <laughs> Everybody copied it for a few years. <laughs> um, that's 
Yeah. Now, it's an interesting story. Let's see if this works. This was Paul's typical warm-up. He would jump lots and lots of little jumps like this for the warm-up. He went to the World Championships, won the first class, was going into the second class and other German professionals. Now, this is as smart a guy has ever been in this business. I mean, monster IQ, wonderful horseman. Uh, not at all a stylish rider, but very successful. Um, and they said, oh, Paul, you got to jump something big. You got to jump. This is a big course, big track. You got to jump something big. Jump the big oxer. Horse crashed. He had to get in the ring within a minute because it was right at the end of his time. Went in the ring and the horse stopped. <laughs> this was somebody who, because of the pressure, did something different than he always did. And uh, I mean, Frank would always tell people, they said, what do I do? He said, do exactly what you did to get here. <laughs> You don't want to change your plan just because it's an important competition. So now we'll talk about what makes him really jump. So again, what we're going to look at is this tuber coxy or point of the hip, how far forward it is because the further forward it is, the greater the length from here to here, how high it is. And we're going to look at the tuba sacrale. That's the jumping bump. And I think that it's, there's been a lot of misinformation about it. But basically, a lot of very good jumpers have a jumping bump, some of them more prominent than others. Then we're going to look at this muscling all through here. You can't see this as well, but it starts all the way up here at the jumping bump at the tuba sacrale and goes down to the stifle. And we're going to look at the point of the buttock or the tuber ischii and see how that sticks out. Okay. Is Leslie here? So Leslie should talk about this horse. Let's start with his nickname. Well, his, name, his nickname was Freaky. Um, and we bought an Emerson bird. Uh, and I went to go try him as a children's jumper for his daughter when he was a four-year-old. And uh, Emerson and I got off the plane. We tried him. And we got back on the plane. And Emerson looked at me. And I looked at him. And, he, and we both agreed he wasn't a children's jumper. <laughs> But we thought that maybe he was a jumper, and I was like, I don't know, very young, 22 or something, 21, 22. And I had never ridden jumpers, and so I uh, we entered them in a few jumper classes, and I, I asked George, who I trained with all my life, life as an equitation rider, to help me with them. So as a six-year-old, George said, well, I think now we need to enter the open jumpers. <laughs> And as a six-year-old, but and, and actually, it's it's very interesting. And and, and um, Danny alluded to this earlier that the horse that as a three-year-old did um, some open jumper classes. And I'll never forget this because as a six-year-old, Melanie had calypso, and I had chased the clouds, and we went to the American Jumping Derby, which is as big a course as you'll ever jump anywhere in the world, and. Calypso won, and, and Freaky was fourth. And then, as a six-year-old, we went to Washington. And I'd never ridden Grand Prix, but George said, well, enter him in the Plissons. So I did. And uh, that night, he jumped seven foot four. And we won. And so George said, well, I think he should enter the President's Cup tomorrow night. And I said, OK. And he won the President's Cup. So then we went to the National Horse Show at Madison Square Garden. And George said, well, I think he should enter the Plissons again. I said, OK. And we jumped seven foot four. And we won that. And then we entered the World Cup the next night, which Arno Gecko built. In those days, it was two rounds in the jump off. And um, so, so we went the first round clear. And then we went the second round clear. And then we went the third round 
ground there. And I said, well, George, what should I do? He says, I said, there's this five foot six vertical, it's the first jump. He said, I said, what should I do? And he said, well, just go as fast as you can at it and drop them. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, his career ended at age seven, but <laughs> but anyway, he was he was a, he was crazy. He became a very unsound horse, and then he. I mean, this is the thing. I have never seen a horse jump puissance as a six-year-old that lasted. No. And Melanie's horse, Calypso, who was so beautifully balanced, he jumped in Grand Prix at the end of his six-year-old year. And he's one of the few I ever saw who it didn't ruin him. I mean, we've learned a lot since then. And these horses, it's, they have so much ability, and it's so easy for them. And you think, well, it's nothing. OK, now we're going to talk about horses that can really jump. There are a handful of horses that never considered these were big jumps. They, this is a very typical picture of Galibay. He never developed any kind of technique. He would just fling himself so high into the air. He was also, he was a really nice horse. Very, I, I worked on him a lot. He was a wonderful personality. The light made horse. Now, you can see where his shoulder is. You can see, here's his shoulder blade. Huge, high shoulder blade. And it, you can, he's, it hits him here. And so here is how straight that is. Here's how low his shoulder is. Big triceps muscle, but here's what we're looking at. Huge length from here to the point of his buttock, a very prominent high point of his buttock, and that long flattish croup with a little jumping bump. This horse, uh, he, he just, he was a stallion. Uh, the guy who rode him, Gilles de Belanda, didn't try to do anything with him except tell him which jump to jump. And he'd go down, he'd be looking in the crowd, looking at, oh, and crash, and just throw himself in the air, and it was so easy for him. Now, this is, in a way, the opposite type. This is the, one of the classic thoroughbred horses ever. This is a horse named Jet Run. If you look at the, this was Jet style. Bill Steinkraus said he made the smallest hole through the air. And he did as little with his body as he had to to jump the fences clean. And he almost always did jump them clean. Uh, and that's part of why he lasted for so long. Here's a picture of him when he was skinny. And you can see some qualities in him. Again, very, very straight scapula. Shoulder isn't terribly low, but uh, prominent triceps. But now look at this. Very long through here, very long through here. And the point of his buttock sticks out. And this little jumping bump. He took a huge scope. Uh, he was also very flexible right in here. When he walked, he would kind of waddle. He would go from side to side. Now, here's a prettier picture of Jet just because I liked him so much. And this is Karen Golding. Uh, and this makes him look more attractive. But it's the same horse. And um, remember I said something about this jump being a bad jump? This may be the only picture in the world of Jet Run having a wreck. 
and that was that bad jump. And you can see he just never realized it was a jump. He didn't know whether it was a bank or a jump. And he didn't actually didn't fall down. I'm not sure, but he sure did crash. Um, yeah. Then this was another horse who didn't know that they were big jumps. This is a German horse named Livius. And if you look at these muscles here, I mean, he had muscles on muscles. <laughs> and if you look at him behind, you can see he looks like a bodybuilder. He didn't have a great front end, but he didn't need it. Um, and you can see here these muscles just pushing him off the ground. This was one of the few German horses that really stayed careful. And I remember saying something to somebody about it. And I hope this doesn't get back to him because he's a friend of mine. But they said, well, if Peter were riding it, you'd be careful too. <laughs> Another horse that never knew these were big jumps. This was a horse that uh, Katie rode horse with a very bad mouth. It was a third string horse in Holland. And she got him and she was able to ride him. It's a horse named Norn. And again, if you look here, you can see how his point of his buttock really sticks out. And look how high his hip bones are. It's almost completely square. Great big muscles. He trotted to a huge oxer in the President's Cup, right? Is Katie still here? No, I'll say last. No. Well, he trotted to a giant oxer and just jumped it like it was easy. Danny, is that Katie in the right hand picture? No, that's Melanie. Uh huh. No, that's Mel. Uh, now, we're talking about, here's a horse, uh, not quite of the ability that those other horses were, but good enough to be uh, on a gold medal winning world championship team. It's a horse named Chef. And if you look how high and how wide his tubercoxy, his hip bones are. And he doesn't have that dramatic muscling, OK? So what I'm saying is if horses are high enough and wide enough behind like this, they don't need quite as much muscling as if their tubercoxy were lower or narrower. Who is this? This is the best horse. He would win the speed, he'd win the Grand Prix, he'd win the puissance, and he jumped about 8 million jumps warming up to do it. <laughs> um, this is, you know, what happened to him? Somehow he's, I don't know what happened, but this is Idle Dice. This was best horse Rodney Jenkins had. Fantastic horse. Now, interesting thing. Very short backed horse. Huge big wither. You look at high hip bones and wide. Narrow chest. One of the things, and we don't have time, but all of these front feet pictures of horses, we don't see any dramatic bad-legged horses, you know. Some of these horses are a little bit different, but 
you, you don't see horses that turn in dramatically, turn out dramatically, have big angular differences in their front legs. Um, because he had a very short back, he lacked flexibility. Some short black back horses have flexibility. He didn't. And sometimes he would pull his hind legs up under his belly to jump jumps. He's the only horse I ever saw who would get away with that. I've seen a lot of horses try it, and he's the, he could get away with it. He just had so much power. George, have you ever seen another horse who could do that? Okay, this is <coughs> uh, Marcus Ennings, World Cup winner. This is Anka. And again, the same very flat, long croup, little jumping bump, very high, very prominent pointed buttocks. This is a very scopy horse. It's a funny picture. Here's a beautiful takeoff, and the horse drops down and pulls its front legs out of the way and barely gets his belly over the jump. And this is Marcus's horse his last time at the World Championships. Again, very, very prominent pointed buttock, very long from here, from the point of the buttock to the hip. Let's see. OK, here's a horse. Again, very flat back. This was Mario's Olympic horse. This is Aramis. So if, if George has you riding around without stirrups and jumping without stirrups, Mario, this was the Olympic Games in 88. And he rode halfway around the course like that and looked like it was just perfect. This was another thoroughbred horse, wonderful horse, snowbound, individual gold medal winner. Huge length here. Very, very big triceps muscle. He slopes down as much as most horses. He has a prominent jumping bump, prominent point of his buttock, but a fair amount of slope, and he doesn't have huge distance from here to here. I would say just normal. This is arguably the best horse in this country now. Some people might say in the world, this won the Grand Prix of Aachen. This is Beezy's horse. He reminds me a little bit of Snowbound. Well, I'll tell you why. Very sloping croup. Prominent jumping bump. Uh, <laughs> and but what he does have is very prominent point of his buttock. So Let's keep going. Uh, this is a horse that is such a long story, I don't even want to tell it. We have time. All right, this was the best horse in the world. Absolutely the best horse in the world. He had won the Grand Prix of Aachen the year before just so easily. It looked like he was just jumping a junior jumper class. This is a horse named Ascon. And they, and now, I don't know about his soundness, but they schooled him and schooled him. He was a super careful horse. And he was odds on favorite to win the gold medal. And by the time he got into the ring, 
This was Gerd Wildfang, one of the strongest riders that ever lived, and he had to go to the stick to get him over the oxers. Now, here's the story I heard. He was, Gerd found out that the owner was selling him after the Olympics. He told somebody, this horse will never jump again. After Gerd had him, some very, very good people had him, and some very tough people. He ended up being a field hunter in England, and he, would, he was never reliable again. This is another horse with unbelievable ability. Thoroughbred horse named Simpatico. If you look at huge depth through here, and then you look at these muscles bulging out like this. And here's a sequence of him. He, he set a record in Madison Square Garden. I think it, well, there, there is no Madison Square Garden anymore, so it still holds. But you can see how he jumps. And he's going to pole vault way up. He goes from being horizontal to this trajectory in an instant. Legs are loaded, pushes off. Then he pulls his hind legs over. And Anthony's jumped loose a little bit, but he stays off his back. And here we go. So, <laughs> this is a horse that was supposed to be by a thoroughbred out of a draft mare. You can sure see the draft, can't you? Uh, this was a very good cup horse, a horse named Ryan's son. And what I wanted to point out again is this very drafty hind end, this very square boxy hind end, which means that these points of the hips are very high and very wide. Now we look at this mare with a little red thing in her tail. <laughs> and uh, again, not the best head in the world, but a very good jumper. And again, very prominent point of a buttock here. Jumping bump. First time I saw this gal ride her, I thought, She's a passenger, and then the second time I thought, no, not at all. She's a wonderful rider. This is a horse that George had. And this, George has always had a theatrical bent, as many of us know. And you talk about comedy and tragedy. I'm not sure whether you, George considers this horse a success or not. This is a horse named Rio. Huge ability, usually didn't give the jump a, a full swing, would sometimes stall off the ground, but in spite of that could jump anything. Uh, managed to break George's femur, his neck, and win the biggest class, biggest money class in the world at the Maurier. So do we consider this a success? <laughs> What do you think, George? <laughs> now, just because we've been looking at so many wonderful horses, this is just a little cow pony working ranch horse. But let's look at some things. Look, here's the point of its buttock, way down there, very slopey here. No width through here at all. No serious muscling at the stifle. 
So this is what ordinary horses look like. You know, you look at all these wonderful horses and you think all horses look like this. Well, this is a <coughs> mare that Joe Farr just showed very, very successfully. Um, You know, I can see it so much better on my screen because uh, I don't have a light on my screen. But if you look a little bit sloping, lowish point of buttock, not excessive muscling through here. So what I would think is not great power. Uh, she had actually quite a straight shoulder, big triceps, huge triceps muscle, very good front end. But she lacked scope. The thing is that Joe was such a wonderful galloping rider that that was never obvious. And here's something that she would do, not infrequently. Um, didn't mean anything. I tell you, you can't take a bad picture, Joe. This was a very nice horse. This was a horse named Victor, lucky boy. This is a lucky boy. Now, I tell you what, though, if you're really good and you're really ready for it, George will teach you a special method of turning. <laughs> Now, the trick of jumping water is to get high. This is not what you want. But this is what you want. Can you see why? Yeah. See the horse's legs? We're talking about freaky. That's where freaky was, right? This is a quadriceps muscle. You would think that this would be, in people, it's a big jumping muscle. This is the muscle in front of your thigh. You can see this is virtually atrophied here. She, OK, this was a misnamed horse uh, and, and uh, probably had bad karma. Uh, she was named Krishna, a mare. By, she was by night and day, thoroughbred horse with a lot of unsoundness big ability, um, but Krishna is a male god. <laughs> so she was a bad shipper, and uh, really a bad shipper. And when they sold her to France, I'm not sure they told anybody she was a bad shipper, and so they didn't take special precautions. And she, um, she died. She, crashed up everything and um, died in the, in, before she, she got home. Uh, so you see this atrophy here, and this was because she had bad stifles, but in spite of that, she could jump very well. Um, here's a very interesting picture. This is a horse, the biggest quadriceps I've ever seen. This was a, a trail riding horse, very unsound in front. And you can see him standing out like that. Just, And he would carry people up and down the hills. And to get off his front feet, he would crouch down behind and develop these, this huge quad. Now, here's what you don't want. I don't know about jumping camels. Maybe this is a wonderful jumping camel. But okay, very low, narrow hips. No muscling through here. Okay. So this is the opposite. We can talk a little bit about hawks. This is an extreme. This is too much of a cow hawk. This is too straight. Uh, horses like this will not stand up for Grand Prix jumping. But here's a straight horse. Okay. This horse, 
I said that in the 72 games, there were only three clears. This horse had one of them. Now, I'm not sure why it had one, but okay, this is Bill Stein crowd schooling. No hat, false crown line, no flags, different ball game. This was a horse named Mainspring, Canadian horse. Maybe not the prettiest horse in the world, huh? This horse had as close to a peacock neck, a saddle horse type neck as any horse I've seen. Huge wither, fairly straight, Scapula, very long backed, big length from here to here. Very unusual to have such low hocks. This was a relative of his. This was a horse that showed nationally, a horse named Miserius, but same hind leg. Let's see, we're approaching the end. Okay. Here's Fleet Apple, Kathy Cousner riding him. Now, I put this together. This is Kathy schooling on Fleet Apple. And this is Nelson Pessoa. He was schooling a French horse for a friend of his before the Olympics. You don't see that anymore. But interesting technique, sitting back, holding the balance with their seat, horses completely loose. An interesting schooling technique. <clears throat> Very quickly, we're coming to the end. Here's what you don't want. This is a horse with bad hocks. Even it looks like the bend continues through the hock joint. Because this horse has what's called a curb, which accentuates it. But if you watch how this horse moves, let's see if we can bring this up. You can see how it actually crosses over the midline and then will go out just before it's put down. This is not a horse that's likely to stand up to be a jumper. OK, now, we only have this picture here. It's a thoroughbred horse, unusual, no withers. Uh, good muscling through here. Not a particularly prominent point, point of the buttock. Not terribly high hips. Um, this was a speed horse. Was not a high class, big time jumper. This is Frank Chapeau schooling it to jump the biggest track in the world. His number one horse couldn't do it, and so he took his wife's speed horse and jumped around there with one rail down. It was an easy rail. He just said he lost his concentration. It was a little vertical on the turn. But I want to show you the amount of dynamicism that he's getting by really making this horse active. And if you're going to try to take a very, very limited horse and jump it over fences that are much too big for it, that's the kind of ride you're going to need. OK, let's look at this horse's front legs. This is just a little thing about soundness. Now, I'm not saying that this is good. OK, short. Short is straight up and down pasterns, back of his knee, tied in below his knee. 
This was Abdullah, uh, second in the Olympic Games, gold medal team winner, uh, World Cup winner, uh, second World Championships, an incredibly sound horse his whole life. <laughs> He fortunately did not read the book. <laughs> and there's Sue, his owner. And we have lots more, but this is going to be the end. And what I'm saying is it doesn't matter how much ability or enthusiasm you have, you need the livestock. Thank you.